Hey folks, welcome back to another cooking at home episode here at Time Out Kitchen. Today's episode features a protein and pasta combo that is wonderfully bright, tangy, and even more wonderfully easy to put together. I am of course talking about chicken piccata. Now with all that said, you might be asking yourself, well, what the hell is chicken piccata? And I will do you the disservice of using my amazing Italian language skills to explain. So chicken, well, is, is chicken. And piccata roughly translates to mean pounded flat. Now, before I show you how do we do all this and put this dish together, let's quickly look at all of the ingredients that you're going to need. Oh, and uh, don't forget to stay tuned until the end of the episode to find out how long this recipe actually takes to put together and exactly how much it costs. So the first thing you're going to need, naturally, will be some chicken. So go ahead and grab yourself two or three chicken breasts. In this case, I have three. Next, you want to grab yourself some dried pasta. Now, uh, in this case, I went with some spaghettini, but you could go with normal spaghetti or if you want something a little bit more thick, go with some fettuccine. Then you'll want to grab about four or five cloves of garlic, followed by the colorful assortment of ingredients you see here, which include a medium-sized shallot, uh, which you could replace with a white onion if you'd like, a sizable handful of fresh and aromatic basil, as well as a similar and somewhat equal amount of fresh but less aromatic parsley. Now put those herbs down and grab yourself a lemon. You'll need this to add a bright hit of acid that kind of adds that familiar zing for this dish. And uh, speaking of zing, you'll also want to grab yourself about two to three tablespoons of capers, making sure that you remove the extra liquid. Now guys, these are a must if you want to have a, well, somewhat authentic version of this dish. Now, something that is optional is to add about one or two pieces of anchovy. Now, I like this to just kind of give a bit more depth of flavor, but if you're not a fan, you can go ahead and skip these. Moving on, you'll want to grab about one cup of chicken broth because you totally didn't forget to buy chicken stock at the store. To that, you'll want to add about a quarter cup or so of white wine. In this case, you'll want something kind of dry. I happen to only have some Sauvignon Blanc kicking around the house, but you can use really any white wine that you like. Finally, for our dredge, you'll want to grab yourself just enough flour to lightly coat your chicken. In this case, that's going to be about one cup or so. And for flavoring outside of just salt and pepper, you'll want to grab yourself one tablespoon of dried oregano as well as one tablespoon of garlic powder. Oh, and you'll want a couple of cubes of cold butter to help build up our sauce. And there you go, that's everything you're going to need to make a really simple and delicious plate of chicken piccata. So of course, since we've covered all of our ingredients, it is time to move to the prep. But before that, B-roll. Okay, with our tasty b-roll out of the way, it is time to prep our chicken. So go ahead and grab your chicken breast, making sure to remove any of that excess fat that you might see. And with that done, just flip the sucker over, place your hand flat on top, and cut horizontally in half. Then, of course, you're just going to repeat this process uh, for the rest of your chicken, making sure you get this nice sort of butterfly look to each piece. With your surgical skills mastered, it is time to grab some plastic wrap and lay it gently over your chicken because you'll be grabbing your closest blunt instrument of choice, of course, and in this case, a rolling pin, and begin beating your meat. Just take care not to go too hard as you don't want to tear anything. Uh, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. With your chicken flattened to about a quarter inch or so, you'll want to season both sides with a healthy pinch of kosher salt and several cranks on the old pepper mill. When that's done, it's time to grab a baking sheet or a casserole and drop in your cup of flour. Don't forget to season your flour with some kosher salt and a couple of spins on the old pepper mill. And then for some more Italian friendly flavoring, go ahead and add a tablespoon each of oregano and of garlic powder. 
give this a mix and then drop in your chicken and lightly coat each piece with your seasoned flour. Now, again, the idea here is that the flour will help build up a nice crust on our chicken, but also create a fond at the bottom of our pan, which will add a ton of flavor. With that done, move this to the side and start prepping the rest of your ingredients. So grab your shallot and make a couple of quick incisions so that you can have a very finely diced final product that looks something like this. Next, just grab your garlic, smash and peel them before finding your garlic press and giving these a good squeeze. Then grab your basil and parsley and chop these into a fine, beautiful chiffonade. Or, you know, just thinly or however you want really, but in any case, I would recommend you keep about a third of your chopped herbs to the side for plating purposes. Anyways, with all your aromatics prepped, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And with that done, it is now time to deal with our capers. So go ahead and grab about two or three tablespoons and give them a rough chop. Next, we're going to prep our lemon, which is code for slice thinly. So cut your lemon in half and then, well, begin slicing. Uh, you'll wanna keep the other half of the lemon to squeeze the juice directly into the pan a little bit later. And speaking of pans, it is time to grab yours and place that on a medium high heat before adding in about two to three teaspoons of oil. In this case, I went with a canola oil, but you could use some olive oil and then just gently drop in your chicken. Let this cook for about three to four minutes aside or until golden brown before flipping over and cooking for another three or four minutes. With your chicken fully cooked, go ahead and put this to the side before adding another two teaspoons of oil and dropping in your shallots. Give this a quick stir before realizing that the pan is way too hot and then inexplicably adding in your garlic. So, you know, let that burn for about 45 seconds while stirring and pretending that this isn't quite as burnt as it looks. Finally, recognize your failure and move this off the heat and, well, start again. So now we're gonna drop our heat to medium low Add some more oil and drop in our shallots and garlic at the same time and make sure to stir immediately so, you know, we don't burn anything. After everything is translucent, go ahead and add your chicken broth or ideally chicken stock and scrape the fond off the bottom of your pan, making sure to enjoy your unburnt aromatics. Next, add the juice from a half a lemon, ideally making sure that no seeds fall into your sauce like I did, but you know, no one's perfect. Then add in your quarter cup of white wine and let this simmer for three or four minutes before adding in your capers. Then just give this a stir, bring it up to a simmer and add in your very optional but very delicious anchovies to the pan. Now, the anchovies will slowly dissolve on their own, but if you wanna speed up the process a bit, go ahead and smash it up with your spoon or fork or whatever utensil you've decided to use and then just let this simmer away until it reduces by about half, and that should be about seven or eight minutes. Once the sauce has sufficiently thickened, you'll wanna add in your slices of lemon, both to help with the acidity, but also to make everything look, well, a little bit more pretty. With that done, it is time to drop your dried pasta into some salted boiling water. Now, a key here is that you'll want to make sure that you cook your pasta just slightly under as it's going to finish in our sauce, and you'll also wanna keep a bit of that starchy pasta water to help thicken up the sauce a little bit later. Now, speaking of that sauce, it actually has been about five or six minutes now, and it's nicely reduced, so we're going to add our chicken back in. Now, with a bit of wiggling, the chicken should rest comfortably in the pan, and this is the perfect time to get those lemons out of the sauce and place them on top of our chicken. Cook for another two or three minutes, and then remove your chicken and lemon slices and place to the side, because as you recall, we saved some of that pasta water, so it is now time to add in about a half a cup to the pan, simply to deglaze and to help thicken our sauce once again. Mix everything together and bring it to a simmer, and then just let this reduce by about a third. So after about five minutes, your sauce should be nice and thickened, and it's finally time to add your butter to finalize the sauce. So this is known as beurre monté, which is uh, mounted butter or mounted by butter. And the idea here is that you're adding butter that basically remains emulsified and helps thicken our sauce. So make sure you kill the heat, add in that butter, and then grab your basil and your parsley medley and place it in your pan. Mix all this together until the butter is melted, and then you can breathe a sigh of relief because all that's left to do is add in your pasta. So grab some tongs and toss the pasta gently into the sauce, making sure to coat each and every noodle in that lemony, buttery goodness. And with that, you've made it to the final step, plating. So grab your most appropriate dish before scooping in two large tongs worth of pasta and then placing down a piece of your amazing looking chicken. For some extra sheen and a bit more flavor, you can optionally add one tablespoon of olive oil uh, before gracefully scattering all of your fresh basil and parsley over the top. And there you go, your amazing chicken piccata is done. 
we were able to turn a handful of really basic ingredients into a vibrant and filling dish perfect for those busy nights. The only thing missing, of course, is the taste test, so grab your fork and knife and get yourself some of that amazing chicken. Now you can see that this chicken has some nice color, but more importantly, it remains wonderfully moist. It's got a nice acidic note from the lemon and even get hints from the oregano and garlic powder from our dredge. Meanwhile, the pasta is perfectly cooked and the capers and lemon in our buttery sauce just make this something I could eat all day. So sure, we've got all these amazing flavors in one dish, but the question you're undoubtedly wondering is, well, how much time is this gonna take me to make and how much is this going to cost me? Well, I have to say that this dish does not only great in the flavor department, but it also does amazing in terms of time and cost. It took me just a hair under 35 minutes for both the prep and cook time and comes in at a whopping price of, drum roll please, $2.40. And you could definitely get that cost under $2 if you served yourself a little bit less of the protein. In any case, chicken piccata is truly a dish that is delicious, relatively quick to put together, and won't break the bank. With that said, if you're a fan of this dish, let me know in the comments down below what you think of my version, and if there are any recipes you want me to try in a future video. And with that, we're done. So thank you so much for watching until the end of the video, and as always, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. We will see you in the next one.